All right, what up, what up, what up? This is the Avid Dreams Podcast. I am your boy, Jashar. I'm Chanel. And we're going to get right into the shits. First off, let me ask, how are you doing? <laughs> right before we started. I already know how she's doing. Because she just told me some shit right before the camera started. But So y'all know, how you doing? It don't got nothing to do with nobody. Nothing. Like, I'm just in an irritable mood. You know how when you're getting ready and, like, this shit is not falling together, right? Oh, yeah. Like, everything was not coming together. Like, everything was falling apart. And I'm, like, trying to get ready. I'm just like, nah. I'm like, mm. But other than that, I'm cool. I need some day. <laughs> but no, other than that, like, um, it's been cool. I mean, got a wedding coming up to go to. My friend's wedding. And... Tomato. Yep. And then, yeah, work's been cool, too. I've been hitting my goals and stuff. So I'm good. How about you? Yeah, um, I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good, you know? Uh, you're just staying on top of content, creating and creating more and more. I was just in the studio yesterday mm-hmm. for all you Jashar fans who are probably, well, hopefully watching this. Probably watching this. Should be watching this. Should be watching this. Fan, you definitely should be watching it. I was just in the studio yesterday. I recorded a new song called Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the engineer I was working with, he told me that the song should be done by tomorrow. And, um, you know, so that's, you know, that's all hidden. You know what I'm saying? That's Brand new to Char Music coming. Probably not going to release it until the album drops, which shouldn't be too much longer. Mm-hmm. Um, I got one more song I got to record, and then I got three songs that need to be mixed and mastered. One of them should be getting done tonight. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, but um, yeah, that's dope. Yeah, new song. Yeah. Also, I want to give a shout out to uh, Studio Marquina. I just got this uh, fire ass necklace right here. I won a contest, and uh, she makes uh, handcrafted jewelry, which is bomb as fuck. And she <laughs> gave me this, and I also got this hoodie for my birthday. And as you can see, it matches really nicely. It matches really perfectly. So. That's crazy. Yeah, Studio Marquina. I'm going to make sure I put a link in the bio or the description. And then, uh, yeah, let's get into it. I First off, um, on the <laughs> on the chopping block is uh, Bryson Tiller. We're actually, um, well, I'm actually, well, I was. I kind of am still. Well, Bryson Tiller, he put out this fire album called Trap Soul. I think it came out in 2015. Yep. Fire from top to bottom. Yep. And ever since that album, he has not been able to make anything that great since. Except for that one song he did with Tori. I hate what song did he do with Tori? He did that, um... <sighs> I feel like I heard it before. Yeah, it's one of my favorite songs. Well, you can look it up, because I'm going to talk about the album yeah, a little it. bit. So I listened to, like, a couple of songs on there. I was going to say I listened to about 60% of the album. I like songs. <laughs> Come on, let the songs on there. Come on, the songs. <laughs> and <laughs> and it was cool. Like, um, like it wasn't trap soul level. Keep in but touch. But it was. It's keep in touch. I'll have to hear it. Woo! Oh, but I play it. It but wasn't. They were it wasn't trap soul us. level. Like it was like it was decent. I feel like he didn't really have some hard hitters on there like Capsule had five years ago. Yeah. But also... Not really any bangers. Not really any bangers. Most of them feel a little bit more R&B-ish, more Super than R&B. the last one kind of had a rap slash R&B vibe. Yeah. Through. And it was more gut... Like, it was more like... Gusto. What you, yeah, it was like more gutsy. Like, it was more... more pu- it was more punch into it. It was more passionate to that album. This one sounds like something... But he was just like, honest, I probably it's time for me to put something else out. The feeling that I kept getting when I was listening to this is like, I felt like I was in the 90s mm-hmm. listening to old school R&B. Yes. Which is cool, but not what I was expecting from Bryson Tiller. And to be honest with you, I, I don't want to say I was expecting more from Bryson Tiller. Because I think Bryson Tiller did what he was supposed to do on this album. It just I didn't I wasn't really rocking with the production for a lot of it. Because there was some tracks that started off that sounded like it was going to be fire. Mm-hmm. And then the drums came in and I was like, why did you lay the drums like that? Mm-hmm. It didn't hit the way I thought it would. However, there's one song on that album. Uh, 
Street Fighter. Yeah, you played it yesterday. The last song on the album. What is that called? What is it? What, yeah, what, yeah, what, what, what's it called again? Next to you. Next to you. That boy is fire. The one with Drake was like mid too. That was mid, which it was is very weird. mid. Like you had one feature on the album and you picked Drake for it and it's mid. Like you really showed out. I think it was one. a song Not that was mid way. and then it was like Drake was like, I guess. But why would he pick that song to get like at least the last one was the hottest one on that album? I agree with you. Yeah. From what I heard. Like why would I don't know. But I feel like Drake did that on another album where he was like a feature, but it was like mid. Hey? No, it was Rihanna, my bad. I apologize. That was Rihanna. I can't remember what album it was either. It, oh, it was Party Next Door. Party Next Door, that's right. You got Rihanna. You got on Rihanna the song. on there, and then the one he cho chose to put her on was mid. So I was super mid. What's the point? I downloaded it because I love Rihanna, and then I was just like, why did I download this? Like, did they think that was the one mid song on their album? They were like, I gotta put somebody on it so it's worth listening. It's gotta but be I, one. It has to be on the album. I tell you what. Is that their thought process? I tell like, you what. I never thought I'd say this, but 21 Savage album is better than Bryson Taylor's album. Plus, he got a more fire Drake feature on there. And he got Morgan Freeman on there right now. Morgan Freeman. So probably, that's a good touch. That was a dope touch. You can't you can't go wrong with Morgan Freeman. I heard I guess he's like rapping better a lot than like a lot better than he used to. He was. On this he song. didn't sound as like nervous. You know how you, you ever think that he sounded nervous like when he first started? I don't know. I thought that was just his voice. He don't sound like that on this album. He sound more chill. He sound more confident. When was his last album? Like how many years ago? I wanna say like a year or two ago. Cause it had um Cause he's probably it had that a song bit... a lot on it with J. Cole. He's probably he overplayed that on the radio. He probably has like a lot more shit that happened to him in the month. Eh? I don't know. That one was better. Or I don't know. <laughs> maybe he just... Is that I don't know. Like maybe he just like sometimes you like you be in your bag. Like I feel like he was in his bag. To take it back to Bryson Taylor also, like to talk about like how much time passes between albums, which I was just talking about with 21 Savage. It was like two and a half, three years. Actually, I oh, think it was, it was five. It was five years? For Bryson? No, he put out a, a second album after Trap Soul. That we didn't care about. And that one was trash. And then he was like, I'm depressed. I can't live up I to expectations. And I think that one came out like two years after. So it's been three years since. Okay. You like that pinky ring? That's mine. I stole Chanel's pinky. It was on the table. He stole it. And but anyways, that one, on that one, that one, that one is like all right. Like his new album's okay. Would I have paid money to, like, would I buy it? No. I would buy that single next to you though. Like I would have the single. That but you can get a single fire. from Apple Music easy. That boy is fire. You can get a single from Apple Music easy. So but, I wouldn't. I personally would not. Yeah, that's the, that's the only song that I downloaded from that song. I was surprised to hear he's coming out with something new, and I was a little bit excited to hear it. But I haven't. There hasn't been a lot of. You know, on top of that too, off, like the cover of that album was reminiscent to the Trap So album. It was. It was just him looking in the other direction. It was looking in the opposite direction, with you know the Trap So was a red cover, and then this one was the blue cover. So I'm like, maybe he. Oh, it's called anniversary though. It's called anniversary. So, so I thought he was dipping back. I thought he was dipping his toe back. <laughs> Dipping his toe he back into the toe. funk of that album, but he did. Yeah, that's true. So I was like, he went in a completely different direction, but he was like, anniversary, you know what I'm saying? Same cover. You know, I'm like, this doesn't sound anywhere near Trap Soul. And it seemed like that's... Let me ask you this. The do promotion kind of seemed like it was it was supposed to do that. Do you think he has the ability to exceed Trap Soul at any point? No. You think he peaked? Yes. I agree. You know what's crazy? Because they people say like a lot of people have the sophomore slump, and that um uh, that sucks though. Like, but you, that happens with so many people. Your first album, that's your. Well, peak. see, like with the first album, he had like years to put it together, and then once you sign to a label, then you only got like a year and a half to like put something new out. But it's like if you're not constantly creating and stuff, you get a little rusty, and I think he got rusty. And, you know, he's not really great with the promotions and all that. So, I think this album is just going to fall by the wayside. I'm sorry, Bryson. Yeah, but you also say you don't think he can peak down there, so. Yeah, yeah. The only way. Nope. 
Actually, no. That's just gonna be a good money maker. You features. Know he features and stuff. I mean, he no. got some fire features. He was on the DJ Khaled song. He was on the wild, the... wild thoughts, wild thoughts. I'm not gonna front though. I didn't really like him on that song. After Rihanna, I thought, went, I thought he fit good on there. He did good, but every time he, he came up, I wasn't a fan when he came on. I was just like, all right, let's get through Bryce's verse. Like his his verse was good. Like it was good. It just wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't giving me Caribbean vibes like that. <laughs> That's fair. Like, he could have gone, like, full Drake with the accent or something. Like, give us something to... Yeah. And he always does, like, those love songs. That mm -hmm. has nothing to do with that. I'm just being We're spending too much time. At this point, I'm being too petty about it. We're spending too much time. Let's get on the next topic. I'm sorry, Bryson. You need to do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bryson. You beat. <laughs> <laughs> next topic. Next topic. <laughs> All right, so in the next topic, um, this past weekend... Uh, Megan Thee Stallion did a performance on SNL and a lot of people were talking about it because I think she performed Savage and some other song but then she had like this whole political agenda behind it where Black she one. was yeah she was going up against the guy who was in charge of the Breonna Taylor um, uh, trial and she was saying because he was a he's another black dude and I guess he I don't know if he was a judge or something. No, he was a governor, I believe. Governor or on the Senate. On the Senate. He was a governor, but he didn't do anything that helped move that in the right direction that said that, you know, she was murdered in her bed. You know what I'm saying? Which, which is kind of weird, and a lot of people looked at him sideways because, you know, as a black male, you would want to stop all this, you know, mass shooting of black males and black people, period. But it seemed like he just kind of turned the cheek. He said he's been doing his... First of all, he said her calling him out was disgusting. And disgusting. I guess distasteful. Distasteful. Um, but... He, I think he also understands, because he's a Republican, too. He's a black Republican. Yeah. You're never going to be... <laughs> you won't ever be accepted as a black man. Republican, I mean, African. But he looked at it as him doing his job. And to be quite honest with you... um. The people, the, what they did get charged for, which is basically shooting and, you know, the shots went through a neighbor's house. What, three people were in there, they weren't injured. BS. Um, yeah, and, yeah, the, all of that stuff, like, they got charged for everything but, basically. Mm -hmm. And her calling that out, I don't, when I saw the picture of it, it just, it just came off weird to me. Like, to be honest with you, I feel like it should have been called out. But I agree with you. It was weird that she, it was her that was doing it. Yeah, because she's never. Once I, again, using me, the same analogy, dipped a toe. In I don't. Agendas. I think anytime we have an opportunity to have an agenda, to have a you know um, someone speaking out about all of the brutality, police brutality, um, the black people being you know murdered, and all of the violence around that. I think it's awesome to have that narrative out there and have celebrities that are higher up have that narrative out there, but we just haven't gotten that from her before. Right. So it came out of left field. And the only problem that I personally had with it was that it feels like it wasn't as strong of a case for her. Like, I feel like she probably wouldn't have done all that if she didn't get shot in the foot. Ooh, what she say? Because, like, if you think about it, like, she wasn't... Like, talking about protect black women and all that stuff before the end. And you know how I am about that. If mm -hmm. you're really about it, don't jump on a bandwagon and, and, like when it happens to you. Right. Like, you should always be advocating Kanye. for other people. And, and people in your race is like, what's going on with them? Like, you should always be advocating for it. Right. Like, I don't want to say A, B, and C didn't happen to me because I don't want to... Because obviously, you don't want that happening to anybody. Right. But even before any of that happens, like... You never had that agenda out. You just now doing it on SNL on a platform. Is that her first performance on there? I think it was her per first performance on SNL, yeah. Yeah, so it just came off as, like, honestly, like, it came off, first of all, as self-serving. Mm -hmm. And I said this about Kanye, too. I'm sorry, I'm really very, like, sensitive about stuff like that because there's, like, this whole broader picture that has nothing to do with you, and you only insert yourself when it pertains to yourself. Right. And that's what I have a problem with. Right. I still appreciate her having the agenda out because obviously they did, you know, the most disrespected and, you know, like 
dis yeah, the most disrespect. I'm trying to think of the other word for it, but most disrespectful woman or you know disrespected human in America is the black woman. Yeah. And yeah. I appreciate the agenda for it. It just came out of left field and it just rubbed me the wrong way. It came off. I don't like people using it and coming off as like it being more of a commercial thing, and than an actual like agenda or motive. Right. Or, you know what I mean? Like it just rubbed me the wrong way. But I'm not against it, but I'm also just like, what? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Question mark, question mark. Yeah. No, I can, I can understand what you mean. Because, like, um, yeah, I don't even think she performed a song that had anything that would, you know, go in that direction of what she was talking about. No, she's known, to being, she's known as being a raunchy rapper. Right. And that's completely fine. But before this whole incident, the shooting incident, we haven't we've seen you post about Breonna Taylor, we've seen you post about George Floyd, we've seen you post about you know you know all the you know countless lives we've lost, countless mm -hmm. black lives we lost. But that's about it. And every other celebrity was doing it too. Right. There's nothing that she's ever you know implied where she was politically inclined. Like oh yeah, I see A, B, and C policies happening. I think we should do it. You know, Cardi B, if we saw that out of her, I'd be like, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, it makes sense. She's but like, it very just, active it very, on like social media. Yeah, it just came off as very commercial and like you've never done anything like this. Like, why now? Why after right. your incident happened, you're like super into protect the black woman and super into oh, it's Breonna Taylor. Like, you don't, you've never done anything like that. No. So it just came left field to me. That was my. That's the only thing that rubbed me the wrong way. Other than that. Dope for Megan to put that out there. Like, it was super dope. Obviously, we, the conversation needs to be had in mm -hmm. America right now. Mm -hmm. But I just, it just was just very left field to me. And it just rubbed me the wrong way. But overall, we still have to keep the, keep the narrative going. Okay. What were your thoughts? I'm going to be honest with you. It was just kind of, I thought it was interesting. But it didn't make sense to me. Because, like, you know when Kanye did the same thing? Hate to bring up Kanye again. But he did the whole black skinhead thing, which was, you know, actually talking about some type of uh, racism in America. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then he had like the stuff going on in the background and blood, then, on, the know, like, the blood on the leaves. Yeah, the, the speech, the music kind of matched the motive. And it didn't feel like this really matched the motive because, like, from what I've seen from her music, she doesn't really talk much outside of shaking ass and, you know, Getting dick down, getting dick down, all that type of stuff. Money yeah, so I was just whack. It was kind of left field for me, but you know, it was also something that needed to be said. That's basically honestly what I'm the saying. only female rapper I can think of that's ever, like I said, was Cardi B that's ever really had a mm -hmm. a, a foot into it. Cause Nicki, no, no, not really. Remy Ma, maybe no. Remy Ma, not really. Yeah. Megan, not really. Not really. Like, none of them are putting Diamond. Them. But to You're be like honest, Diamond. this could go down a rabbit hole because... <laughs> Darn <Diamond. laughs> It just brought out crime mob out of nowhere. Um, but really, like, I feel like... Um, this is what a conversation that they had, too. Like, we're going to kind of go on a tangent a little bit here. Just quick little rabbit hole. Is when German Duran Dupree was talking about what black people was rap about. Mm -hmm. And the Doja Cat says something like, that's what you guys want to hear from us. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't ever want to hear anything outside of that. You want to hear us talk, or hear us talk about social policy. Like, they can't do a Kanye album like that. Well, see, here's the thing. Here's, and sell as many records. Here's, here's, where I, here's where I feel this differs. Because this is, this is, because this, because um, I know that there's like, you know, a huge backlash on like female rappers and what they can and can't do to be popular. But... I'm also thinking about Drake and something that Drake was doing. All of his content that was on his albums was never on his singles. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He used to put out singles that he knew sonically everybody would like, but then you go to the album and you would get something different. You'd be like, okay, I'm finding out more about his life. This is what he's doing right now. Blah, blah, blah. I think that would be cool to hear something from like Cardi or Megan or something like that. Megan opens up the doors. This is how I felt like when I got shot. Fuck this nigga. He ain't shit. Blah, blah, blah. This is how things went down. We used to have this type of relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would want to hear some stuff like that from female rappers. And I feel like 
because like the mass appeal only wants to hear that type of music, just put that out as singles in between your content for your album. How about this? Okay, so you know how Childish Gambino kind of works, right? Gambino, yeah. My dude will like put a message on a song that has, like, that sounds great sonically, right? right? So like, um, what's the one song he did? Um, summer. Feels like summer. Feels like summer. That one, you had no idea what that song was about or what he was saying until you read the lyrics. Right. Because even the video kind of looked like just kind of blew past the whole idea. It, yeah, and you had no idea. Like I. I mean, somebody else gave me their own interpretation of what they thought that song was about. My personal opinion is global warming. Right. Um, and with that being said, like, you would have never known until you read the lyrics. But the beat is, like, so, like, amazing and so chill and uh -huh. so, like, just amazing. Like, um, you just would never think that that song, like, there was a deeper meaning into it. Right. So maybe that's the avenue they need to take. I'm going to be honest with you. I do feel like a lot of these... Um, I hate to use the word female rappers, but a lot of these rappers, I feel like they're smart enough to do this, but maybe they feel like it's too difficult. Well, Megan's gonna have to switch it up at some point. Eh? Cardi B, I feel like she could probably stay the same. She could be like the female flow rider. Just putting out banger after banger after banger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Slow Rider never really had much content. He was just always on the billboards nonstop. Yes, but we don't see Cardi B shaking her ass all the freaking time. Like every, like almost every post is shaking your ass. Oh, you're talking about posts. Posts. I'm talking music. Straight up music. I'm talking about her whole career. She's going to have to fix, switch something up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to yeah, have yeah. to be more meat there. And I'm not talking about her ass cheeks. A little more goose. But I'm <laughs> <laughs> Right? No, um, she's going to need a little bit more meat on her, bo like on her <laughs> bones. On her bones. On her career bones. bones. <laughs> you get my drift. Yep. The bones of her career, she's going to need to put more meat on there. Because after a while, we're going to be like, oh, great. She's taking her ass again, talking about rag penis. Like, <laughs> what's new? <laughs> Like we all like like hearing that, yeah. but we sometimes we just kind of want to throw a wrench in it or do something else. Like even Nicki Minaj, she was getting into pop. We were talking about partying or yeah, she was evolving like her sound like sonically, even if she was still talking about a lot of the same elements. Mm -hmm. But uh, she would evolve a little. Or she would talk about like even Nicki Minaj has some songs about sadness or whatever. Cardi did the same. I don't hear Megan Stallion or anything other than. Shaking ass, still in your dude. Yeah, how many different ways can you say the same thing? I've been wondering about that. Because I used to think that about, like, Jeezy back in the day. And I'm a huge Jeezy. That's what I'm saying. You got to switch it up or else your fans will be like... They're going to be like, oh, mm. after all that. Because you know people are fickle. Real fickle. They don't leave you in a second if you don't switch Especially it up. Especially today. That's why you got to switch it up in the industry, too. Like, and, you know... Getting like she's gonna have to move into pop soon too. She hasn't already. Well, technically, she is pop right now. Really, you think so? Yeah. When you at the top of the, if you at the top of the bill, you're you're still hip hop. But if you're at the top of the billboard, but is she doing songs that could be under a category at the Grammys for pop? Savage. Yeah, that's a pop song. He's got me there. <laughs> but let's get into the next topic. Um. Wow, I didn't expect us to really go into those like that. Yeah, and we didn't go kind of deep into where I guess we wanted to go, but we could save that for another time. I'm sure there'd be something that happens soon when you talk about it. President Trump. Mm. He came, <laughs> <laughs> he came yeah. out. Uh, he had the COVID. We mentioned this on the last episode. He, he had, had the COVID. The COVID. <laughs> My hands came out and said, I've been in the hospital for the past four days, but I'm just built different. The Rona can't fuck with me because my body too, my body goes too hard. The doctor literally said, I've never seen a body fight a disease like this before. Never fight a disease and like your this. your big 74-year-old body. I'm a 74-year-old Superman, is what he said, basically. <laughs> and um, yeah, so while he was talking about, you know, how he had beat the Rona, basically, while he was gasping for air, he uh, wound up tweeting that he wasn't going to release the stimulus checks until... 
after he was voted president. Yeah. Which was, uh, I, a lot of people was mad about that, obviously. Who doesn't want money to help them out in these hard circumstances? Mm -hmm. But um, I had heard something about uh, there were some stocks that dropped like 500 points after he said something like that. And literally, I think it was either later that day or the next day, he had mentioned that he's ready to sign the sign the checks for the stimulus. For like the sign the bill. No, we're ready to sign it. I'm just I'm waiting on you guys to you like, you know what you said. Yeah, he's ready to sign. You know you fucked up some shit himself. and you had to backtrack. That's basically what it was. Yeah, because, I mean, you completely taken the whole point of being a president out of the equation when you say, I'm not giving you what you need until after you vote me back in. Right. Like, you're clearly not for social welfare at all. You're not. Like, it does not make sense. Like, when I read that, I was like, bro, like, so you just saying, like, F everybody. Like, y'all going to be my slaves. Like, y'all going to be, like, waiting on my every beck and, beck and call or whatever like that until like you guys aren't getting any money from me until you make sure i'm back in office then after that i'll probably he'll probably still like sit on it i can't see him passing anything that quickly after it's i'll be surprised shit. if he did but like we've been hearing about the second stimulus for so long yeah since Ooh. the first one dropped in what what was it april yeah something like that so, so that was way at the been... beginning too so you've given people like legit like it's been six months six months to be for people to figure it out yeah and I'm surprised there's not more looting going on. At this point, yes, and not, and that's outside of the racial outside of the racial living. injustice. Yeah, just like how are people actually surviving out here with the way they just forty million people without jobs. This is the longest length record length that we've seen unemployment this high for this long. And it's also the highest it's been since the recession. The recession, well, not the recession, the Great Depression. Not the recession. The Great Depression, which happened, what was that, like 1914 some shit? <laughs> I thought it was like the 40s. <laughs> it's how, it's the 1940s or some shit? It's been a minute. I ain't been in history classes. Bro, we should look it up. Later. Anyway. No, later. Anyway, anyway, should look time. it up. Anyway, we should know it at some point. If y'all got a problem with what we got to say, <laughs> speak in the comments. Okay. You got something to say, say something in the comments. Let us know what the year is on it. You got something to say, <laughs> the decade that it you want to you wanna check us, speak in the comments. <laughs> Let's get to the next So comment. the depression, you said it's the lowest and best is the depression. Yeah, the highest um, level of unemployment since the Great Depression. Okay, great news. Sounds good. No more point. <laughs> to, to backtrack. <laughs> This man, like his doctors are reporting he's good. And this man is 74 years old. Like, he's, he's is this him, not? Him, like, and not only that, but he's downplaying it. And from what I hear, he's receiving medication that most, if not all Americans, do not have access to. Including a very, very strong steroid that apparently would wake up a dead person, <laughs> is what they call it. Is what they say. Pretty sure 90% like of us semantic. don't have access to that. Yeah, nobody has access to that. So you're downplaying it. It's completely irresponsible. And disrespectful to the, to the people who actually died from the COVID. Well. Very disrespectful. We Like, I had an uncle who was in the hospital dealing with... What you mean, I had an uncle? We had an uncle. We had an uncle who was in the hospital who was dealing with it. And he was in dire circumstances. Like, I was shook. Like, I was so scared. Yeah. And he was known and as being the, he's he's the strongest one of the strongest people in our family. Like, just amazing people. And the fact that that happened is like, it was crazy to me. Glad you made a speedy recovery, Uncle Mike. Mm -hmm. Love you. Yeah. But we were like shook up about it. And I completely agree with you. You took it another level. Like, that is just completely disrespectful and irresponsible. So, I mean, that's all I have to say about it. I was really, really, like, really offended when I was reading him saying, like, oh, it's da 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 like, oh. And then he's still not wearing his mask around the White House. Like, you really do not give a shit. Like, wow. He really does <sighs> But, yeah. In other news, DC movies have pushed all of their movies back. If you was excited for the Batman with Robert Pattinson dropping next year, well, guess what? You're going to have to wait another year because it's dropping in 2022 now. Instead of 2021. One. And then like uh this time next year it's supposed to be dropping. It's not dropping until a year after. Um the flash has been moved back. Shazam has been moved back. 
and Black Adams has been taken off the roster altogether. <laughs> they took one out? They took one off. That's the movie with The Rock, which doesn't make sense. He's got, like, the biggest star power. It makes sense for them to want to green like that. But that's been taken off the mantle altogether. In Marvel news, <laughs> so they're like, I don't give a fuck about DC. I don't give a fuck. Who going to the Marvel? In Marvel news, Spider-Man 3 is filming next week. We were just talking about this last week, about how they said they got Electro, in this movie, which is weird, because Electro is part of the old Spider-Man series, not the MCU. But another thing in news is that Doctor Strange is also going to be in this movie, which will make sense about the multiverse type shit. That excites me. That <laughs> excites me too. The Electro thing did not excite me. That excites me. Well, see, see, the Electro thing excited me because it's like they can get into the multiverse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They can you open up, up some last, portals. Uh, you know, okay. he can meet Andrew Garfield, all that type of stuff. But now inserting Doctor Strange basically says, I can make this happen. Andrew Garfield can't show up. Tobey Maguire can't show up. There's rumors that Kirsten Dunst is supposed to be coming back. If they weave and wove and weave between and all weave and these, and weave and wove in between, wax and wane in between all these timelines, I'm gonna be excited. I'm excited to see it. I'm already hyped for it. But they film it next week. Dope. Hopefully, when some pictures come out, we'll probably have like more rumors and more stuff to speculate about, like in game. Super hype about it because there's basically nothing else for Marvel except for WandaVision. So we got to get hyped for Spider Man. Well, I want to it's going to be dope. I'm excited to watch it. That's going to be dope. Even though Disney Plus be running <laughs> from, it's not my internet. Disney Plus been acting up. You know what? You need it's to get your to shit together, some, Disney Plus. It's not easy watching a movie, like, all the way through. Like, it stops in, like, buffers. Like, we, I thought buffer, we left that in the 2000s. Ba back with, like, the dial-up dial and shit. Dial-up and shit, net zero. We don't all. buffer no more, Disney no, Plus. No, like, cut it out. I, I thought, thought it was better than that. I thought <laughs> Disney Plus was just doing that to her computer, but over at um my girlfriend's crib, it's buffering over there, too. I told you. And we got the highest there. internet. Exactly, we have the highest internet here. We ain't no scrubs. Exactly, that's why I'm just like, this doesn't make sense. We ain't my no other, scrubs. My other apps don't run like that. That's why I knew it was Disney Netflix Plus. don't do I that. I knew it was Disney Plus. Hulu don't do that. It doesn't. That's why I was like, it's gotta be... Get your shit together, Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Get your shit together. You got by the end of 2021 or earlier. Because y'all too big of a company the to be playing with The end of 2021? I said at the most. Before that, they better get it together. Because we don't have the time, okay? It's not cheap. Nobody got the time for that. No. Disney Plus needs to get it together. Y'all make all that money off of me going to see Endgame 16 times in the theater. Y'all going to fix this Disney Plus. Y'all going to fix Period. it. Period. On top of that, it's making my cell phone bill bigger. Because it's all tied in with the Verizon. If I'm going to spend more money on my cell phone bill, you got to get your shit together. You tell them. All right? Speak. Because it's true. Nobody want to be at paying all that extra money if it doesn't work smoothly. And it costs more than Netflix, doesn't it? And Hulu. Wait, it costs less than Netflix. How much is it then? Nine ninety nine? I think it's like five. Disney Plus is five something? Five ninety nine. I mean, I thought it was more than that. But still, you're paying money. It's out of your pocket. It is out of my pocket. Yeah. So at the end of the money day, money. it's coming out of his pocket. Get I could be getting Disney. six Arizonas with that shit. <laughs> that is a lot of Arizonas, too. Quick six stuff. Arizonas. I be getting thirsty. No, I get it. No, regardless of what it is, like it's still out of your pocket. You work hard for that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they need to get it together. It's Disney. They make way too much money to be playing around like that. Um. One more thing I wanted to talk about. What was this? Uh, this was a topic that you said you wanted to bring and highlight. A to the, segment. A little segment to bring to the At the Dreams podcast. Speak, Nelsy Wolf. So I figured it'd be kind of cool to do like a dating thing because since, she, was it like 2019 since last year? I don't know. Let's just keep this to reason. From what I've been noticing, there have been an increase, it's been an increase in gender wars. Gender wars about dating. Yeah. And I'm irritated. Like it's annoying to read. Together. Sick and tired of hearing. Everybody's that. pointing fingers. Men ain't shit every two seconds. And then I women, are gold, shit. women are gold diggers, like women all of that. Gold diggers, only fans. Two, 
We need to get it together. Men, yeah, it's usually mm-hmm. men cheat, they ain't shit, and then on the woman's side, women are gold diggers, women ain't shit. Mm-hmm. So, we had a topic today that I think you sent me. Yeah, something I posted on my story. It was about um, <clears throat> some lady who uh, said that she was with high fished. Is that how she explained it? High fished? Basically, there was some guy who was posting pictures on his Tinder profile, it was just close ups. And then she met him in person. And he was a lot shorter than um, what the, the picture, you know, originally specified. So I put a poll up saying, like, women, would you be mad about that? And there was a bunch of women, you know, who came out and said, no, I wouldn't be mad about that. But I don't know if y'all was just trying to be, like, socially responsible and socially nice. Because I feel like if you met some dude who was like, yo... I thought I had an opinion about this before, but now I just switched from me and you talking about it. That's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's her fault? Because if you look at the picture, if you look at the picture. Because the way, bro, he's like three feet tall. Yeah, he's probably like three feet. Probably, no, he's probably like four feet. You ain't asked my man for a body shot? I don't, I'm sorry. Like when back when I was on like dating, shots? back when I was, I'm going to tell you. Back when I was on dating apps, like you, if you don't see a full body picture, that's already a red flag. Yeah. And then on top of that, I always ask height because I'm five six. Like I said in previous episodes, I'm not tall, I'm average, but you'd be surprised when you guys are like around my height. Right. So I usually ask for it because I don't want to date anybody my height because I want to wear heels sometimes. That's discriminatory. Hey, this is my purpose. Discrimination. Every woman, like if I wind up like getting I'm standing somebody, up for the short men. You tall though. Tall as fuck. That was noble. But of somebody you. need it's to stand up for these young, these small men. It's noble of you to do that. The Kendrick Lamar's, the Lil Wayne's. Six, three, six, four. Dope pipe for a guy, right? However, don't do that. You know what? Really. You were just standing up for them. Then you gonna do that like you the shit? Cause you I know, am that's, the that's, shit. That's light you? skin energy. That is light skin energy in the in the in the costume of height. That yeah. is light skin energy. I mean, like, cause you knew you were like. I mean, that's like that's like Elon Musk coming out and saying like everybody deserves stimulus, and everybody like yeah, he's standing up for the little people, even though he rich as fuck. It's the same thing. So you equate being six four six three as being rich as fuck in the conversation. I'm, you know, it makes it my is. pockets bigger in the dating scene being a tall man. It is. <laughs> but what I'm going to say is she should have asked for some pictures. I have to even have a picture of a guy smiling before I like want to be with them. Teeth is an issue for you? Teeth is huge for me. Teeth is huge for me and height is huge for me. Like if she didn't. Okay, let me say this. If a guy, because guys lie about their height a lot, even on dating sites. Like, they'll be like, oh, I'm 5'10". That really means like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, <laughs> Lots of times. Right? But this dude, you know what I'm saying? This dude was like four feet tall. So from the picture you saw, like, you would automatically, like, you can't be like, oh, well, maybe you have to go on, like, how, how he sits on the stairs. Like, if you see a picture of him on the stairs, like, kind of his legs are... Like, if he can fit the leg <laughs> on the next step. You know what? There's, there's some rocket science you gotta do in order to figure out do the line or not. A, is he doing the Kevin Hart? Is he doing the legs dangling, like, off the curve? Like, you gotta do all of that. But this guy was, like, legit, like, three to four feet tall. Mm-hmm. There's no question about it. So that's her fault. I mean, she couldn't, She he didn't post a full body. She should have asked for him before she met with him. Okay. Am I right? Like, even even if we're not talking about height, like, body type. Like, unless she just don't got a... Some people like have, like, zero preferences. Body. And if she didn't really have... If she z- really had zero preferences, she never would have made the post in the first place. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. You agree that it's her fault? I think it's her fault. She should have asked before. When you're meeting people online, you got to ask all the questions. If you're bothered by height, if you're not ready to date somebody who's, like... At that height that he was, just three to four feet tall, then you should have been asking for pictures. You're right. You should have asked him how tall he was. If he said 5'10, 
Now that's not okay. That's not cool. That's gonna get you popped. <laughs> that's gonna get you popped. But if height isn't, you know, it, it, it's Really, really, really. I, I say it's her fault. You don't think it's her fault? All right, it's her fault. I'm just saying. There's a lot I of still stand things. up for the short men out here. Yeah. You got a tall ally in me. You guys have tons of five foot women that don't want to date you when we date six feet over. Okay. That's messed up. Girls be like five foot. Um, if you ain't six foot, then you can't get this foot. Be like, what the? What does that mean? <laughs> Like, no, like, I feel like those men are reserved for women who are actually not your girlfriends, like, shorter. She's Too many shorter than She's 5'3". Yeah. Too many. What's up with that? Like, they love dating tall guys. She's 5'3". Save it for us, huh? No, nah, she's 5'3". My ex was, um, 5'6". She was my other five, six. You're right. She was 5'7". But then the ex before that was 5'1". Yeah. I don't know. I have a preference for taller men, but... Yeah, for some reason. I like 5'10 and over. 5'10 and over? I think that's greedy. I'm 5'6. So if I'm going to wear 4-inch heels somewhere, I don't want to be hungry. Why are you wearing 4-inch heels? You don't want... You never wear 4-inch heels. You never... Women don't wear 4-inch heels. They don't want to wear 4-inch heels because it hurts their feet and they got to bring gym shoes. Quit bringing that shit up in the conversation. I want the option. You don't want to wear that shit. I would like the option, though. All right. For sake of argument, okay, if you want that It might option. be tied into a little bit of daddy issues because you want to be able to look up to All right. <laughs> to look up to All right. Now you get what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I feel you. You're right. You're right. Women don't like wearing them heels. But they don't they like wearing them heels. They don't. They don't like wearing them heels. If you like wearing them heels, get in the comments and tell me something different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That moves into the second piece. This is like kind of the second, um, the it, second round into the segment, right? It, this is the second so the second one is basically, um, basically, they had a, like a, I think it was like a podcast I was watching, and basically they were talking about if a guy asks you a certain way out, whether he's willing to pay or not. So like they were basically saying like if the guy says like oh like do you want to go get something to eat, then he will like. We're like you're paying for yours and I'm paying for mine. And if they ask, would you like to like I would like to take you out, then that's the indication that he's meant to pay for both parties. So they're like kind of trying to differentiate how women always think that the guy's supposed to pay. But if I just say like, oh, we're hanging out and I just want to chill, then you're gonna pay for yourself. Uh, to be honest with you. When it comes to me, if I ain't got the money to pay for somebody to go out, I'm not asking them to go nowhere. I'm not asking them to get me food. Yeah, because he was like, oh, if we're mm. going to be going, like, you're going to enjoy my company and food will be present. <laughs> they on some bullshit. Like, come on. Like, if you ain't got no bread, you ain't trying to pay for an old girl, and you just trying to kick it with her, be like, hey, why don't you come over and hang out? I got some popcorn. Yeah, because it kind of, like, stemmed from, like, it being like, oh, when women... Um, when guys ask a girl out, then he's like expected to pay or whatever like that. Like it is, it is. It you're the one. To you're the one being expected to pay. But it's like you're the one that act, like are expressing interest in me. Me going and paying for myself to come with you indicates that I also was interested in your company at the same percentage level. That's elitist. That you were what? That's elitist. How is that elitist? <laughs> If a dude you asked, asked him to come and kick it with me. You asked me what to hang out. What if you just want to go and kick it with him too? That's cool, but like you're the one that gave it, that you gave, you showed interest. And you're like, hey, can I go out? Like, do you want to go out? Do you want to go out for something to eat? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. Like, Because lots of times, I'm not going to front. Lots of times, even especially for me, I don't even really be liking the dudes that I be talking to at first. It takes me a little while to actually like get into it. No matter how they look, like it takes me a while to like warm up to being like, oh, maybe I can see myself dating. Them That's just smart. Yeah. Huh? That's just smart. But yeah, it takes me a little bit time to warm up. So at first, I'm not 100% like, yeah, I want to go out with this dude. And then me having to pay for myself to spend time with somebody that I would have never tried to talk to or hang out with is a little bit like, who do you think you are? Like, no, I feel you. 
This doesn't make sense to Not me. Really. Like, Fellas, dating advice. If you're trying to kick it with a girl, you ain't got no money, invite her to come hang out with you with whatever you're doing. Yeah, just ask her, like, hey, you want to come over and watch a movie and stuff? I got popcorn. Yo, I'm at a basketball game. Would you like to join me? Yeah. Yo, I'm at the movie. No, no, don't, don't use the movie. <laughs> but hey, I'm at the skate park. You don't go there, you have the popcorn with a hole in it. It's my dick in the box. <laughs> Uh, she's going to be like watching the movie like this. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> what? No, that? but like, fellas, straight up. Like, if you ain't got no money to take her out, basically, that's basically what the society is right now. Women expect you to pay if you it's don't ask always them out been like day. this. However, if a girl says, hey, you want to get some food, I expect her to pay for me. <laughs> Listen. I expect her to pay for me. <laughs> hey, do you want to get some food? And I'm just sitting over here not hungry, like. If you're not hungry, then, then you don't you No, no, no. I'm going to eat anyways. But I expect her to pay for me. This is what I do, all right? If like, a guy wants to go out and I'm like, or not. If, if you're hungry. If I'm hungry and I say, hey, you want to go get some food? Then we go. And then I'll pull out the debit card knowing he's going to pull it and give it back to me. And it's going to want to pay up. for it for me. Then that's dope. That's messed but up. that's guys though. Like I'll be willing to pay, but they'll just pull my debit card. Like, Straight up, if I got money to take a girl out, I'm going to be like, yo, let's go get some food. I'm hungry. I know you're hungry. Then you pay for the food. If I ain't got no money, come over, come chill. But my thing is, why is this even a conversation? Because some niggas was talking about it on a podcast. No, no, I get it. But this gender wars thing is like, who cares? Like, just pay. Well, you can make the same argument for the women, only too. thing. The only thing that I think the reason why this is coming up is that so many women are being very vocal about what they expect out of men. Out of Like I told my friend earlier, like, I, like the $200 date thing. Like, one would have been like, oh, I expect a $200 date on our first date for anybody she's going off with. She goes out. And there's that expectation, that talking point that's been on Twitter like crazy lately. And my thing is, if you aren't literally strategically only dating rich men, why is why are you expecting $200 dates out of somebody who's 23 and still in college? Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that doesn't make any sense. It's like, why are you putting these high expectations on men that you know cannot provide that for you? You know he can't do it. So go and date a dude that can drop 200. Pooler. Go date you a drug dealer who's 23 now. Go date somebody who's able to do that. Don't like it. You can only have those expectations if you're that's who you want to go after. Maybe we're accomplished you financially. Put yourself in harm's way. Because the only dude do that's going to be able to really pay for that is the ball players, the... You know, like, you have to make millions to do a $200 date, but you have to... You're not going to be dating men your age, usually, yeah. to achieve that. Yeah. And, like, women being so vocal about, guys, you need to do this, you need to do that, and being, like, demanding about it, vocally demanding about it, I feel like it was driving all this conversation. I mean, like, if you're going to demand that type of stuff, like, I feel like you got to have something to offer as well. That's true. You ain't got nothing to offer. Because a lot of the women who's doing this is is people is women who just don't have a lot on the table to give they in have nothing return. Nothing to offer except for the whack. Yeah, sometimes it's the dab. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, a lot of times the whack is the dub. Yeah, so it's like I feel like that <laughs> is coming. That whole thing is coming out like women's expectation of money. It's always been like this, by the way. There's nothing new for 2020. Women just are like more vocal. Way more vocal. About it. Because men have always been dubbed as the provider of the house and have always been dubbed as the person who's paying come out of their pockets. The only difference now is women saying, like, you know me. You know me. Y'all can set it up for us. Now they're getting pissed and cautious. They're getting cautious. Like, you'd be like, oh, can you buy me this? Back in the day, sure. Instead of being like, you finna buy me this, right? And they gonna be like, <laughs> that's the only difference I've noticed. No. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was our little, our little. Uh, we should call it something. A little something corner. <laughs> a little, a little, a little nook. dating advice nook. A little dating nook. 
a little Ooh. conversation. We'll, we'll come up with some type of title. Maybe we'll bring it back next week. She have like a title page too. We're going to be like, Dee! and have like a little tablecloth background dating nook. <laughs> <laughs> that would be dope. Yeah. Um, I'm going to actually try and get a guest on here next week. But um, okay. if it's just me and Chanel next week, that means they screwed us. <laughs> oh, you really already talked to them about it? Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't talk about them for next week. I just said, hey, maybe in the next couple of weeks. You, you, hey, you, 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 you might want to come to the show with dog with us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. And she was like, yeah, you know, I'm down. This, this shit, sounds, this shit sounds dope. And there's actually like three different people who are all like, yeah, this shit sounds dope. But when it comes to fucking action, we need people to come in. And actually do the action. So we'll see you next week. Yeah. If we got a guest. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of requests. People who want to come on. Mm-hmm. So that'd be dope if they come through. All right. Yeah, I think it's time. You know, it may <laughs> actually be time. <laughs> Even though we just killed not. this podcast, just you and me. <laughs> yeah. Body kill it every week, just you and me. Body. Body. So, but hopefully next week we'll have a guest. I um, want to say thank you for watching the show as usual. The numbers have been going up. Subscribers have been going up. And I appreciate y'all. Chanel also appreciates y'all. We want y'all to like. Go meet you. Go. Sorry. Keep going. Go meet you. Don't even make it to me right now. We want you to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you hit that, hit that bell. So every time we drop a new video, you know exactly what time it is so you can see it first. <laughs> Thank you. That first. Thank you once again for watching the Avid Dreams podcast. Peace out. Peace. <laughs>